Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm in a top secret location somewhere in BC because I'm giving a top secret review of the Tenere 700. Oh. Now I've owned this bike for almost a year now, so I think I'm qualified to give you all the ins and outs of this machine. Hmm. All right, let's look at some stuff. So lately, bike manufacturers have been making all kinds of fancy high-end bikes with all kinds of fancy gizmos on them. So getting closer to touring bikes than you are to a true adventure bike. So Yamaha said, let's go the other way and make a bike without any fancy gizmos. Basically, the only thing you can do on this bike is turn off the ABS, which you definitely want for off-road. So Yamaha gave us a parallel twin, basically the same engine as the N MT-07. Very reliable, one of the most reliable engines that are out there. And while it doesn't have a lot of advanced technology, they did take the technology from the old Super Tenere, which gives it lots of low end power and traction and revs. So off road, you'll have more than enough traction and power that you need to get where you want to go. You'll notice how the uh, swing arm is a lot higher than what you get on other bikes. So basically, what the theory behind this is, is as you accelerate, you're pushing, it pushes the back tire down, which gives you lots of extra traction. So then as you're pushing the back tire down, the bike is coming up. And so what that means, the front is getting a lot more weight, so that's pushing down as well. So you're gonna get lots of extra traction from this. Now there's a lot more videos out there on the fancy physics of it all, but for most of our purposes, all you need to know is high angle, Extra traction. The Yamaha gave us a 21 inch front and an 18 inch rear, which is fairly standard for these bikes these days, but it's nice that they threw that on there for us anyways. The Yamaha tells us that this bike is gonna go 190 kilometers at the top end. Hopefully 5.0 isn't around watching if you try and do that. It's got a 16 liter tank, which gets you about five liters per 100K, which allegedly gets you around 350 kilometers which would be nice, but right around 200 for me, I start to get the last bar and start to flash, which maybe gives me another 50K. So I haven't run it to empty, which I will try one day, but 250, maybe I could push 300 if I was super economical. So I'm not sure where this 350K is getting in, but if anybody gets 350K out of their Tenere tank, please let me know and how you did it. So the front shock is two-way adjustable with compression and rebound. So you got an adjustment up here, and the other adjustment is right under here, in the very bottom. The rear is three-way adjustable with compression, rebound, and preload. And as is with most bikes, the preload has the dial underneath the seat, as well as there's a screw on here and a screw at the bottom of the spring to set your compression and rebound. It's worthwhile to try and figure out what you need to know for that. I'm no suspension expert. I hardly know anything about it. I'm just starting to play with it. But since Yamaha gave us all these fancy uh, adjustments, might as well figure out how to use them. A lot of people say that the uh, spring might be a bit light, might be a bit soft if you're heavier or carrying a lot of load. I'm close to 200 pounds and while I don't know much, I did find on my last off-road trip that I did start to notice that it seemed very, very bouncy. So I tightened it up as much as possible. So once I get a real chance to test it out, I'll let you guys know how it is at the top end and whether I need to actually upgrade to a higher spring. Come standard with the Scorpion Pirellis. I don't know too much about tires, but they don't seem to do that great in the mud. They seem to be all right in the dirt, but there's probably a lot better tires that you could have off-road than these guys. But until I get more experience and really figure out what I need, these will do for now. As far as the height goes, I'm 5'9", and sitting without touching anything, my tippy toes touch. So you do got to lean over to the side a little bit to get one foot planted. So maybe another inch lower would be nice. I do have a seat concepts seat coming, which allegedly is slightly a bit lower. So when I get that on, we'll see how that makes a difference for my feet. The seat itself isn't too bad, but for long rides, it may not be the most comfy. 
There is a rally version that's supposed to be more comfortable, but for the most part, it's not too bad at all. So Yamaha gave us a very basic display. It's got our fuel, kilometers, got our clock, our rev meter, and you can select the options for trip odometer and temperature and such, either from here or there's a button on here. And you just click down there and it changes your odometer, gives you the outside temperature, the engine temperature, your fuel, and your trip odometers. And to turn off your ABS, you just push and hold this, but you have to be at a standstill. So that's kind of a pain in the ass. Your clutch and your throttle are all cable controlled. So keep it basic. Since they didn't put any fancy gizmos on here, they just gave you a bar here where you could attach your uh, phone or GPS or whatever else you desire. So Yamaha gave this bike a respectable 75 horsepower. Doesn't seem like much, but with no power assists, it works perfectly well at the lower and top ends of the scale. The bike is fairly narrow, so you can get away with a smaller fuel tank and a smaller radiator. So because the bike is so narrow, you're really able to grip it and it's got lots of room to move forward and back when you're off road. You can really get over the handlebars, get way back if you need to. And you can really easily squeeze with your knees so you can really get balance. Wow. Notice how I'm standing and the bike isn't going anywhere. It's got very smooth power, minimal power dips, minimal vibration. So it's quite a, quite a nice feel. We've got a basic windscreen, which I've added on the extra bit here. This is really nice when it's high up and you're going at high speeds. You really don't get the flow right into your face as much. Now, even though this is a small bike, it still weighs 450 pounds, which is still pretty big. Now, for me, being not that experienced, I probably should be learning on something smaller. As you've seen from my other videos, I seem to fall over quite a lot on this bike. I don't have the balance or the skills necessary to hold it up, which makes it very tiring. And eventually, I'm probably gonna damage something more serious. So, it might not be a bad idea for me to get a smaller bike. And if you're just starting out, it's maybe something to think about is starting out with something smaller before you advance even up to a bike of this size. So some of the complaints that I've seen, and one which I really don't get at all, is how this display is a, bit, a little bit loosey-goosey. Yeah, it moves around, and I've seen people add parts to it to really stiffen it up. But who's sitting there staring at their display? If you're off-road, you're not ever really looking down at it. And if you're driving on the highway, you're just glancing down at it. So if it's bouncing around, it's not anything that I've noticed has been an issue whatsoever. A pretty good uh, complaint though that lots of people have had and I agree with is the way this exhaust sticks way out. Now it's easily damaged. If you fall over you could easily damage it. Even with the pannier rack I still managed to put some dents in it. And a bigger issue is that since it's attached to the subframe right here that if you were to fall over really hard on it you could damage the whole frame of the bike and now your bike's pretty much done. So that's certainly one area that could be improved upon. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Giving you some insight into the Yamaha Tenere 700, the good and the hardly any bad. Well, thanks for watching guys. Be sure to like and subscribe.